everyone. Welcome back to Data and Donuts. My name is Aaron. I'm here with my friend, Dan Martinez. We're here today to talk a little bit about wage gain tracking and really where to get that data, what, how helpful is that data and what's meaningful and how we can use it moving forward in our planning. But before we get to that, I'd like Dan to share a little bit about himself. Well, Dan Martinez, I've been doing research in the California Community Colleges since 1990, which, uh, which goes back a little ways. Uh, it was funny, had an interview not too long ago with somebody who was trying to say how long he's been using research by saying to use SPSS version 17. Uh, and I was thinking, brother, how about version three? <laughs> so I've been doing this quite a long time. Um, and uh, so I've been, I've been lucky to be able to do this job. That's awesome. And, and Dan has laid the, the track for many of us to follow and really trailblazed a lot in research within the two-year system of higher education. So today we're going to go into a little bit more of a technical talk, maybe not the technical details on how to pull the data, but really something that will help us all as we start looking at, you know, what's post-college? What's the end game? How are we helping students move the needle? And so one of those needles to move is wage gain. You know, we always would look at what's the return on investment. Of, of coming to a two-year college or any institution. And so how do we tell that story? So Dan, what strategies have you used to track student wage gain? Well, the tracking post-enrollment outcomes um, is really kind of the, uh, the holy grail, right? Um, we can do it in a couple of ways. Uh, we can start with the, the asking students how they do it. My understanding of the CTE outcome survey is that it started at Cabrillo College back in the day, and it expanded to a regional project, which then expanded to a state project that uh, people had to buy into, and then the state started to pay for it. But it's asking students about their life after college. Some colleges have used, many colleges have used um, EDD data, which provides information, and um, that's really, really helpful to people. But it, um, it has some limitations, and one of the limitations that I found, like me personally, is that it's very difficult to connect with somebody at that office. I tried many times to, to get some kind of a contact, and, um, and so far I haven't been successful. And then, of course, there are these third-party businesses that are doing it, like um, I think Burning Glass does some stuff. MZ is doing some stuff uh, where they're doing – they're going and scraping data from, um, from websites like LinkedIn and some other things like that. Um, one of the ones that is – I think is very exciting, but it – a little expensive is the services that are available through um, Equifax, because this is this is uh, verified data that's, that people provide when they want to apply for a loan for a car or for a house or sometimes for a job or anything like that. So it's it's really solid data, but it tends to be you know a little bit pricier than those other options. So it's every option has has good and bad, every option has its limitations. And, uh, and I think we're, all of us are still trying to figure out how, what's the best thing we can do for an appropriate amount of money, that kind of a thing. And I completely agree with the appropriate amount of money. We actually piloted that Equifax and they actually ping not just uh, applications, but payroll records because they own access to every payroll like we're saying like hundreds of millions of records and while we were able to match a lot of data i think we only had around 40 percent match based on a one-to-one -one match so while what well, was good and it was cool to learn like three years before and six years after um right. it is a very pricey approach and i would recommend if anybody's trying to look at that look into your grants maybe those types of dollars that that have more flexibility on how to be used when we know many institutions mine included uh, have, are very tight on resources. So those may be an option to look for. But 
you really find some interesting outcomes of where students are, what the highest degrees they've attained, just as Dan alluded to, what's kind of wage gain they're actually making. And then as we get this data, as you start uh, bringing data in, how can this data be used? Like, where do you think would be a pertinent use of this information? Or how do you use it? I think it's, yeah, sorry to interrupt. I, 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 uh, I, I think it's really about um, marketing the institution to to its community. Like you can come to us, especially at community colleges, you can come to us for a relatively low cost. And these are the kind of jobs that you'll be able to get, this kind of money you'll be able to make. Because I, I do believe that education is about getting a good job and, and, and making a living, being able to take care of your family. Uh, so I think that's how we could use it. Definitely. No, I think that's a key component. And then really learning, bringing that back to our college to seeing where we can scale and do that and how it facilitates that really good planning and really telling our story. You're right. When anytime like I go into a store, like what's the return on investment of, of buying these brownies? Am I going to be satisfied with these brownies? Are they going to get me where I want to be? Maybe. And so <laughs> it's probably a terrible analogy, but it's all good. Um, <laughs> um, but as we start maturing, how data starts expanding and the like, and how different methods of collection, finding data from scraping, matching, and even surveying, where do you see this going as far as maybe post-graduation outcomes or, po um, or long-term outcomes? Where do you see this, especially with wage gain? I, I, I think what, what you said was is crucial to keep in mind, and that is the maturing, as we mature as a system, how can we do it and what should we do? So for instance, um, with the CTE outcome survey, it asked students to provide information about their wages and their jobs and that kind of thing, some two years after they leave us. <clears throat> and they, they asked two groups of people, the skills builders and the completers. And one of the problems that I see with the data, and I've made a few presentations on this, is that they provide the information, the outcome information, with those two groups of students combined. <clears throat> and I think that they are fundamentally two different kinds of people. There's a, a student who completes a program is different than a student who comes in and takes whatever that criteria is, six units or nine units, or whatever that is but doesn't complete, it's a, it's, a, it's a completely different thing. Not to say it's not important, but to say that it feels like we're asking two very different groups of students and combining them into one. I think learning to split that out is part of that maturing. But the other side is if we look at it, let's, let's use um, uh, Equifax as an example. So yeah, it's kind of spendy, but it's very useful and powerful information. So we could do something that right now for community colleges is free, but it's self-reported versus something that costs a lot of money, but is really you know, accurate since people are verifying their income that way. There's got to be, to me, there's got to be a, a, a middle ground. But part of the process of research and science in general is that is that is that grinding that moving forward step by step, trying this and trying that, and then seeing how we can get together? I don't think we're there yet. I, in fact, I'm not even sure that we're close, but I do think that we are making progress. I completely. Agree. I don't think I answered your question. No, I think you actually <laughs> think did. You did. You did answer it to say, you know, we're going forward. You're seeing where things are starting to blend together and finding that what we almost call like in baseball, the sweet spot, you know, where's that right. sweet spot of data right. where, where right. we can all afford it in a way that's palatable, meaningful, and timely, and can help inform our decisions and really look into the why. Right. And I think it goes back to, right. you know, with the surveys that are being asked, like, what questions, why are they, how are they being used? Because I, even though we think through the right. user's lens is, why would right. I answer this? And am I going to put a million dollars this week? Or are we going to put a hundred thousand dollars this week? How do I feel? Right. I'm going to put $10 this week. How do I feel? Right. You know, depends right. on my right. Bitcoin. Just kidding. But, <laughs> 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 but, but I think that's a really good point you bring up is especially when you were talking about really um, blend or um, disaggregating the data down, because for example, we have a lot of classes, your institution, mine, and I'll use a few of mine is, is uh, cybersecurity. 
a lot of individuals coming back to cybersecurity, getting the certifications, already have a bachelor's or a master's degree, have years of experience, and they may just need one or two classes to build upon the work they're doing to get that certification. Same thing with our data analytics program. The last class I taught in it, right. uh, 75% of the students had a bachelor's or a master's degree. And it's really going to certificate program because you're seeing these people identifying skills needed to advance in their work where the degree is helpful, but these short-term skills and wins along the way may look at something, maybe not, it will be wage gain, but also a question of advancement in work and maybe how they segment those questions out would almost really look at that. And I, I think those are some key areas to really consider, especially as, as we're seeing wage gainers, we're seeing people going back to work, we're seeing people trying to reskill and, and rebrand themselves. How do right. we do right. that and really capture, right. is this a program to, to add resources to, you know, primarily these are typically our career education things where there's Perkins dollars, strong workforce dollars. And do we see how we can leverage our resources effectively? to really make that impact. Right. And then like, like you said earlier, like when we're branding it, like why would I want to take a data analytics class? Like that doesn't sound fun. It does, but it, it, you know, like how do we say like, what's the return? What, what are you investing your time in? And how can we invest right. in you? Because we're here to help you advance, you know, socially, uh, uh, financially, mobile, like wherever you look to go, we're, we're here to meet you where you are. And so I think that's where it really can really come to the message. And I think that's some really good insight you brought today with that, which leads to our bonus questions. So bonus question one is I've heard the terminology data. I've heard datum. I've heard data. I've heard data. I've heard a whole bunch of different ways. And, and so there's no right or wrong way. Typically I morph when someone else says it that way. I'm like, yeah, they're like, I did some data. And I said, yeah, like, that data, let's go, you know? So uh, I am i don't discriminate against any way it's being said. And so, uh, but how do you say it? I think it depends on the context, actually. You know, if, I, if I, I'll say data analysis or, or have you looked at the data? And uh, I think it depends on the context. Really? And so uh, I know that's kind of, kind of uh, you know, taking like an easy route, like it's this or is that, but I, I think it's just different ways, but you know, quite honestly, I think for people in our line of work, um, I like to use more the, the, the word information because most people, um, you know, our end users, the people who ask us for information, they don't want data. They want information, right? The data are, are, are the, the building blocks. You know, if you're making, make an a, uh, make a cake, you know, you need you know, eggs and flour and milk and that kind of thing. That's data, <clears throat> but you put that together and you get information, and that's your cake. That's that's what people really want, I think. So that's kind of a, I, I'm I'm both hedging my bet and segueing into the next question. And I think that is is spot on. I think you're really on point with that. With you know, we always talk about data literacy, data literacy. It's really information literacy. It's not the transition of yeah. data to knowledge. Right. It's that is that grasping of that information, being able to transform that into some type of action decision or building upon that. So I, I think you, you really lead to a really right. good uh, segue to our next question, which is probably my most super scientific question of the day is what's your favorite donut? Ooh, that's a, uh, I've had a donut in a while, uh, but uh, let's see, I think that my go-to if I went today um, it would be a chocolate covered old fashioned. There you go. Yeah, I like. That's yeah, good. that that's that's especially with a nice cup of coffee. Oh, oh. yeah, that's, that's yeah. on point. Now, now that you're going back to work, yeah. you better start grabbing those to stay awake in the morning. <laughs> I have I have been drinking so much coffee <laughs> since I I've been getting up. I told you, I've been getting up at five o'clock, and I'm drinking just a way more coffee than I ever have. And, um, and it's some, sometimes it's not enough. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely never enough. Well, awesome. Well, yeah. thank you so much, Dan, for coming out today. It's been really fun having this conversation. We'll have to have some further ones. I have some more ideas we can chat about later. But thank yeah. you again for, for coming out today. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Um, and and uh, please uh, subscribe. Thanks for having me. No worries. Thank yeah. you. And uh, we'll talk later. All right. Have a good one. All right. Bye. All right.